First round matches for a tournament like Turning Stone, 128 players, races to nine, are a good laboratory for explaining or learning about Fargo ratings because you don't have players eliminated yet, so you have a wide range of player skills. The middle player of the 128 is at 644. You've got about 35 over 700, with a few of those over 800. You've got about 35 below 600, with a few of those below 500. And the big clump, about 55 players, are spread about evenly through the 600s. With such a wide range of player ratings and perhaps some seeding in the initial draw, first round matches are pretty lopsided, and in fact only three were won by the lower rated player. It's interesting though to see by how much they were won and the degree to which that tracks the rating gaps. This is about a third of the first round matches, and it's the ones with the largest rating gap. You can see that all the way to the right. The reason we stopped here and chose this particular number of lopsided matches is this is the group whose average rating gap is 200 points. You may recall that when players have the same rating, no gap, they win games in a one-to-one -one ratio, at least in the long haul. When there's a 100-point skill gap, that becomes 2-to-1, 20-to-10, 100-to-50. And with a 200-point gap, like for the collection of matches we just looked at, we should expect a 4-to-1 ratio of game wins. Sure enough, if we add all those nines, 21 nines, we get 146. Add the losing scores and we get 46. Pretty much 4 to 1 ratio. Another way to look at this is the average match score should be 9 to a quarter of 9. 2 and a quarter. And sure enough, it pretty much is. You might guess what we're going to do next. We'll proceed by going to matches with rating gaps below 147 points. And we'll keep going until the average rating gap is 100 points. That gives us 18 matches, about another third of the matches, and the total score is 161 to 76, just a little over that 2 to 1 ratio we expect. The average match score is 9 to 4 and a quarter, again just a little over the 9 to 4 and a half that we expect. Finally, not advocating anybody actually do this, but what would have happened if these matches used Fargo rate hot handicaps? For all 55 of these matches, there would have been handicap games, so-called games on the wire, awarded to the lower rated player to level the match. For the bottom group, there'd be one game on the wire, so the player on the right would only have to get to eight to win the match. And for larger rating gaps, the lower rated player gets progressively more games. If you had these games on the wire in, 18 of the 55 matches would have been won by the lower rated player, about a third of them. Some might ask, shouldn't it be closer to half? Aren't hot handicaps supposed to completely level the field? Well, not really. The devil's in the details here. Focusing on the blue group, there the player on the right gets four games on the wire. If the bottom match, Demi versus Eric, with a 92-point gap is pretty even, then the top match, Tom versus Glenn, is going to favor Tom. And we can't give Glenn a little more weight because there's no such thing as a little more weight. You either get four games or a whole nother game and get five games, like Christina gives Dominic. Hot handicaps are only a 50-50 proposition at the bottom of the rating range, and on average the higher rated player has a modest advantage. The Turning Stone Classic continues. Check out the coverage on AZ Billiards as well as Phil Capel's updates. Brackets are on Digital Pool, and the stream can be found at Upstate Owl's Facebook page.